Namaste. <laughs> a little while ago, we posted a video about ontology. Here it is. And we got some very confused responses uh, from people who obviously didn't understand what we're talking about. So I want to show you an application of ontology when it comes to consciousness. So the ontology of consciousness is based on the four states of consciousness given in Mandukya Upanishad. Here they are. Here's the good old chart showing the four states of consciousness. And we've been over this, you know, countless times in our various videos. But it seems like people just don't get it. Well, the answer is you have to make it into an exercise. You have to make it a meditation and look into it within yourself and find these states of consciousness in your experience. That makes it real. So, in fact, really anything we talk about here on this channel, even if I don't explicitly say this is a meditation technique, whatever we bring up is a meditation technique and we use it as such, and we have used it and realized it in our own practice. So, because from the very beginning of this channel, I've said several times, we have the principle that we don't talk about anything that we have not realized, or at least practiced, in our own life. So, that means everything we say is grounded in experience and has proven itself to be valuable, leading to spiritual insights. So, I very solemnly promise you that if you look within yourself for these four states of consciousness, you will definitely find them. <laughs> They are there. Not only are they there, but they're there all the time. All four states of consciousness. And they play different roles in different situations. So, just to make it perfectly clear and explicit, the meditation of the ontology of consciousness involves simply watching your experience and then classifying that experience into one or more of the states of consciousness. For example, you're watching this video and your attention is probably focused on the screen. So that means you're using your external senses to perceive an object in the world. That's Jagrat Consciousness. Now, let's say you finish watching the video and then you sit down and think about it for a while, trying to understand the definitions of the four states of consciousness and trying to see those in yourself. Well, that's a perfect example of Swapna Consciousness, thinking. Or let's say you get tired of that, then you lay down to take a nap. And then you watch yourself going into a dream. That's also Svapna consciousness. But when the dream is finished, after you've been sleeping for a while, and you go into a state where there is consciousness, but no objects, that's Sushupti consciousness. And that is the highest state of consciousness in the conditioned realm. But now, if you look at all these experiences of different states of consciousness, you'll find that the one thing they all have in common is awareness. Awareness of being conscious. 
consciousness of consciousness. You may be conscious of the jagrat, external sense objects. You may be consciousness of the swapna, internal sense or mental objects. You may be consciousness of nothing, and that's sushupti, deep sleep, where you begin to realize Brahman, and all of those are only visible because you have Turiya, or consciousness of consciousness. And that is Brahman, and that's realization of Brahman. So you see, this exercise of the ontology of consciousness leads to Brahman realization. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, Turiya. And because of that, I am conscious of all these states of consciousness and the objects within them. See, it's really the objects that distinguish these four states. When the objects are things perceived through the senses, that's jagrat. When they are perceived through the mind, like thoughts and dreams, that's svapna. When there are no objects and no impressions, that's sushupti. And the consciousness of being conscious itself, the awareness of being aware, the knowledge that I exist, the intuitive knowledge, leads to realization of Brahman. That's Turiya. So you should try this. You should sit down at first in a quiet place so you won't get distracted and just watch your consciousness. Huh? It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's good for you. Eat your vegetables too <laughs> while we're giving good advice and get enough sleep. And while you're asleep, watch your dreams and watch when you go into deep sleep with no dreams. If you do this exercise regularly, you will get to the point where you can remain aware of your consciousness at all times in all these different states. This is self-realization, mastery of consciousness. That's why Brahman is called God because Brahman is the master of all consciousness and all objects. So the difference between these different states of consciousness is only a matter of attention. Where are you putting your attention? Where are you focused? If you're focused on the senses, it's jagra. If you're focused on the mind, it's svapna. If you're focused on nothing in particular, that's sushupti. And if you're focused on being conscious of consciousness, that's Turiya. So you see, this exercise is a gateway to Turiya, a gateway to Brahman, because what we're saying is to be conscious of your consciousness, to focus on what state of consciousness you're experiencing at every given moment. If you do this, you will come to the point where you realize, wow, I can access any of these states of consciousness at any time. That is realization of Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, huh? Tatramasi, you are that, Brahman. So this is the ontology of consciousness. And actually, this is the root of all ontology, of all categorization of existence. Now, the conventional ontology uses the root of thing. But the concept of a thing includes many assumptions that it's a sense object within the material world and is present at the time and can be observed, and so forth. That's not a root. 
the root goes far deeper. The real root is Turiya. And from Turiya consciousness, all the other states of consciousness, and then access to all the other objects of consciousness, grows. And that is how the world is created by Brahman, which is you. So, <laughs> if you do this experiment, if you do this exercise, this can lead to the highest realization. And if you use your intelligence and do it properly, it doesn't have to take a long time. But you have to be aware of the definitions of the terms and the nature of the phenomena that you're trying to observe. You are trying to observe consciousness itself, consciousness of consciousness. That's Turiya, that's Brahman, that's the proof of Tatramasi. You are that. You are Brahman. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.